Hello and welcome to the JavaScript SEO Office Hours. Uh, today, on um, December 9th, 2020, like, I don't know, today has been the longest month of the year, or the longest year of the month, I'm not sure. Uh, great to have you all here. Um, we will go through some of the uh, submitted questions from YouTube, and then I'll hand over the word to the audience. Uh, if you have been to one of these office hours beforehand, or if you're watching the recording and wonder what this is and how you can participate, uh, every two weeks, we uh, or I am posting uh, a thread on the community tab of our YouTube channel um, where you can submit questions. And uh, I also then, uh, if you click on the sort uh, in the comments, you can click on the sort by newest first. And then you see me also posting the Hangout link to these Hangouts if you want to join the live recordings. Um, we have a few questions today. One comes from Raphael, who asks, uh, facing a big problem with PageSpeed Insights and Google AdSense. Pages with AdSense are uh, bad in the metrics, so yellow or red. Um, the pages without are green and yellow. Um, so is there any way to delay the AdSense JavaScript in the plugin called WP Rocket? Um, I don't know. If there is a specific option for this, uh, I know that this is hiding the, the issue from PageSpeed uh, metrics. However, I think if you have a way to insert it delayed, um, that also makes it a little better for the user because the website becomes interactive and visible and the content is there. Uh, and then you load, hopefully, then you load the, the AdSense code. Um, that should be a better user experience. Uh, and if it works, that's great. But uh, for AdSense, I would ask the AdSense folks because I'm not that familiar with the AdSense code base or the way that their stuff works. So that's that's that from my side. Um, and I have no suggestions to uh, work around this issue. I would bring it up with the AdSense support because I think it's important that also our AdSense product um, is makes good on the promise of good user experience. So that's that's that. But I'm not in the AdSense team. I can't really speak for them. Ricardo is asking about the intersection observer. He says, from what I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, Googlebot renders the page using a very tall viewport. How tall is that, by the way? It's a good question. For this reason, the suggestion for the lazy loading of the images is to take the advantage of the intersection observer, among other things. But what if my page is really tall, much taller than the viewport used by Googlebot, everything not included in the viewport, and therefore, is not yielded, is ignored by Googlebot. <laughs> so that's a really good question. Um, the reason why, and I know that Asaf, who is also in, on the call, has a question about the viewport as well. The reason why I don't want to speak too much about the viewport is that that's an implementation detail that can change at any point in time without reference. And you should make your website work in a way that it allows access to all content without having to ha be on a very specific um, viewport. Now, that being said, regarding how tall it is, uh, it is as tall as it needs to be within certain limits. Now, I know that's a fantastic response. But what we do is, and again, that's an implementation detail that can, at any point in time, change. The way that we deal with uh, things is we don't scroll, because that's surprisingly expensive and uh, glitchy. Uh, what we do instead is we expand the viewport. And when, when we see that there's new content being loaded, we expand the viewport further. We can do that quite a while. At some point, uh, due, to money, uh, money, due to memory restraints uh, or constraints, we might not do it any further. So I would recommend um, making sure that you have a way to either split the content up so that you can access it via this specific URL or um, making sure that the individual bits and pieces that you care about are available under different URLs and are submitted through the sitemap, um, or use the intersection observer, uh, but don't expect everything to be in the page unless uh, it is a reasonable or reasonably small amount. So if you, I would say, like, if you need, let's say, like a million pixels, then you're probably looking at something where eventually we would cut off. I picked a million pixels arbitrarily. I'm not saying we can't go further than 1 million pixels. I'm also not saying we are going to 1 million pixels. What I'm saying is there is a certain amount of wiggle room where the intersection observer will still work. And I think we might actually fire all intersection observers uh, unless we see that it stops um, creating new code. But I can't guarantee that that's the case. And I am not sure what the limitations are where the heuristics kick in. So again, as long as these items are just 
basically links to other pages that have the actual content, that's not a problem because then you can submit these individually uh, through sitemaps, for instance, um, or offer a paginated version of the infinite scroll. Um, but infinite scroll is definitely a challenging and interesting use case. Um, normally, intersection observer should get you pretty far. So that's that. Which guides me gently into Asa's question. I know you have a question about the desktop uh, crawling viewport, don't you? Right, yeah. Uh, so you want me to... Feel free to, I can also, oh. do you want me to read it out? I can also read out your question. Yeah, it's better. All right, yeah. All right. so uh, Asaf is asking if on Googlebot desktop, so he has a site with three column uh, layout and one of the columns is triggered only when the viewport is at least 120, uh, 1,200 pixels wide. Um, you haven't seen it being rendered either on the screenshot or the code itself. Uh, what's the threshold for getting the content rendered? Uh, I guess the threshold is 20, uh, or, or 1024 pixels, um, if that's the correct uh, dimension. You think it's aligned with most desktop cases. Uh, 1024 is not really a desktop size, more a tablet size these days. Um, yeah. So as I said, I don't actually know the dimensions because I don't care, and it shouldn't matter as much. Um, I know that there is an option. Hypothetically, we could even do what we do for vertical layouts uh, in horizontal. We can expand horizontally. But as far as I'm aware, Googlebot doesn't make use of that. Um, what's, the, what's the default width of the viewport? It should actually be, I think, the default starting width and height is 10,000 pixels in each direction. So I'm surprised that you seem to be seeing uh, 1,024 pixels. That's a very specific number. And I'm not sure where that comes from. Um, so basically, we ran like around 20 tests. And uh, we hit at uh, 1024. And it brought mm. uh, left, uh, the left column. And you could see. The 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 um, the rendered HTML included the content only when you were um, broader than a thousand twenty four. Right, right. That's interesting because it should be broader. Um, but and, generally, and we, and we, and also we want to prevent uh, of having uh, the thousand twenty four because we don't want to show it for uh, uh, like a tablet tablet. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. um, an interesting question there is. Why? So if, if it's a matter of not showing it or showing it differently, so if it's a proper responsive design, then that shouldn't be a problem. Then it should always be in the DOM somewhere. Is that the case? Or is it only being loaded into the DOM if the screen size has a certain size? Or yeah. sorry, the viewport is a certain size? OK. Right. Hmm. So if you stretch uh, stretch it uh, uh, and reach the like on Chrome browser, mm -hmm. then you reach the 12, uh, 1200. Yeah. So you it like uh, showing up, but if you reduce it, but when you when you say showing up, does that mean it loads additional content at that moment? Right. 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 Hmm. Well. The, uh, What's the use case here? Why is this content not available to someone on a smaller screen device? Because we want to differentiate between uh, tablet users and desktop users. Like uh, we don't want to have this column on tablet because it's look like uh, 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 to to like to mm -hmm. the world. <laughs> right. I understand what you mean. It, it looks too busy. It looks too full. Too busy. Um, interesting. The the thing that I'm surprised by is though that it's 1,024. That's a very odd number that I wouldn't have expected. Um, and yeah, in a with an in a height report, 1,024 as well. And it is quite arbitrary. Yeah, as far as I'm aware, the default number. Well, I would have to double check what we're actually using uh, in indexing because it's a configuration that goes through WRS, and I'm not exactly sure what is the configuration. But again, it's also an implementation detail. And the question really is, how can, if, if this content is important for you, or important enough for you so that Google needs to see it, how can you include the content in a way that doesn't make the design too busy? And there, there's lots of ways yeah, of so doing that, right? 
So, so basically, uh, we did like uh, had the functionality that uh, will uh, take this unit and embed it in like the the shrink version. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it, we're talking about the uh, author bio. Uh, so ah, okay, I see. Yeah, yeah. So we do want to have like to get it crawled by Google, but we we got some kind of solution. I'm just wondering what is the threshold, like. Uh, uh, Seems to be 1024, even though I would not rely on that. As I said, it, this can change any time in either direction um, because we are not guaranteeing this. Is, there's a reason. This is one of the cases where there is a gap in the documentation, and the gap in the documentation has a reason. The reason is that you shouldn't rely on it, and you can't rely on it. <laughs> um, and, and, and like the second question that I mm -hmm. uh, uh, wrote there is. Uh, is that the case for desktop viewport, like uh, 1024? So I think this one, uh, like, this is the... Seems, uh, seems to be, which surprises me because I know that at least for vertical, we do expand. I'm not 100% sure if we expand for horizontal. I don't think we do. But so you would normally see uh, taller viewports as in like more height of the viewport. Um, depending on how large or how tall your content is, that should generally work. Not 100% sure what's happening with height. I'm pretty sure that is fixed, and I'm not sure what it is fixed to, probably 1,024. If you say that that's what your test concludes, I have no reason to doubt that. Yeah, like after 20 tests, we wrote, we reach uh, that number, right? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if that's that's what's happening. Um, I'm actually trying to search the source code right now to find that specific part. Ooh, what's happening out there? Um, to see if I can find the, ah, no, I clicked on the wrong button and now I have the ugly version again. Damn it. The new interface is fascinating. Let's put it that way. Um, and it does no longer have the, the old files, which is unfortunate because that was useful. Uh, I am pretty sure, oh, hold on. Actually, I can, I can try it here. Uh -huh. I can try it by actually just passing in the request through the rendering system, and then I'll see what comes out. Um, but 1024 is a good possibility. You also had the question with the no archive tag uh, inserted by um, Helmet. That should be fine. That should be picked up. If right. it's not, then I would argue that that's maybe a glitch in the cache, and then that's a problem because the cache is not really maintained anymore. Again, uh, I didn't understand. Oh, um, so the, the no archive, if I remember correctly, is pretty much just so that you are not getting into the, into the uh, downtime cache thing, like view page and cache. Um, should be fine. If it isn't, if you see that it behaves differently, then that's a good possibility that the way that the cache feature picks it up happens uh, at an earlier stage in the pipeline, which is a bit of a tricky thing because the cache feature itself is actually not actively maintained anymore. It just is there because it kind of works. And it's it would be a shame to stop supporting it. Um, Probably you're not rendering the page. Uh, it's it's possible. Well, I mean, we're always rendering the page. What's possible is that um, the cache service kicks in right after um, after crawling, which would then basically mean that we are not getting the rendered version. We are rendering the page. We're just not getting the rendered version for the cache, or the cache actually uh, pulls out data before the rendering happens, yeah. which is a bit unfortunate if that's if that's a problem. Um, like the, but, the, the AMP team uh, uh, regards the AMP HTML tag. They say that they don't uh, uh, rely on JavaScript and you need because to. Because they don't have to. Yeah. 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 So maybe with no archive, is the same. I don't know. That is very much possible. Um, but I would be surprised because I know that the, the bit that parses meta tags. And AMP is not a meta tag. Um, the, the meta tags in non-AMP pages are parsed before and after rendering. The question is, when does the cache build its entry? Right? When does the cache get populated? It is possible that the cache populates immediately with a fetch reply from the crawler. So immediately after crawling, it pulls itself a copy. 
It is also possible that it actually only pulls itself a copy once things get into the index. Um, I could see that being reasonable as well. And that would basically mean uh, that you would not see problems with the JavaScript injected um, variation of this. But again, it is possible uh, that we are pulling it earlier in the process, and then you would probably see that, that it's not picking this one up. And this is actually really tricky to debug, because uh, it might also just be uh, race conditions, because a lot of things happen in parallel. So sometimes we might see the rendered version, sometimes we might not. That's something that we see with the cache in general. Sometimes we see the rendered version in the cache. Most of the time, we don't. And I have the feeling that's because the, the cache tries to extract information as early as possible from the document. And that's very likely to end up being before rendering. So I wouldn't rely on the no archive tag being inserted from, from uh, JavaScript. Generally, I would always try to get the meta tags consistent before you need JavaScript, or at least leave them out if you can, and only add them with JavaScript if, if you can't make them consistent between the server sent version and the JavaScript rendered version. <laughs> Excuse me. Bless you. Right, thank you. So uh, currently, uh, our main caller is uh, desktop. So we did it. We did uh, had, had, have this tag on, uh, on the raw HTML and desktop, but when we will move to mobile first, uh, don't have a solution yet, but uh... should be fine. I mean, on the other hand, what's the big problem with the cache? I'm not sure most people are even aware that that still exists. I only use it when the website is down. Um, why we don't want our pages to be cached? Mm -hmm. It's a secret. OK. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's secret. Oh, my. Awesome. No, it's like we're a publisher, and uh, you know, right? Yeah. Ah, okay. I see. I see where this is going. All right. Okay, I understand that. Right. Oh my, the data marketplace thing is broken. I can't actually access the the output from Rafia right now. Oh, that's unfortunate. Um, yeah. So I would test it, but uh, I think you have a fifty-fifty chance. I think it's a race condition kind of situation. Got it. Thank you very much for both of them. Doing my best. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do we have any other questions? We have a few more minutes before I got to head out for today. All right. There's no further questions. I'd like to thank everyone who joined today's recording. It has been a huge pleasure. Um, I wish you all a lovely, lovely time. Stay safe, stay healthy. The next Office Hours is going to be in two weeks. I'll uh, get this video updated, uh, updated, uploaded to the channel as soon as possible. And then um, I'll put the thread for the fortnightly next edition of the JavaScript SEO Office Hours into the YouTube channel. Thanks a lot. Have a lovely evening or a lovely morning, afternoon, whatever it is where you are. Has been a pleasure. Stay safe, stay healthy. Bye-bye.